So now we're going to improve on piecewise linear interpolation by doing something which is of higher degree piecewise. In fact, it's going to be third degree piecewise or uh, cubic. So to get there, though, what we're going to do is we're first going to upgrade our hat function basis. So you remember that the hat functions were non-zero just on, each one was non-zero just on two intervals. Right, so you had tk minus 1 here, tk in between, and tk plus 1 out here. So those three points actually completely determined the hat function. Now what we'll do is we'll take another one of those hat functions defined on the next possible sequence, okay, and we can combine those to get something that depends on all four. And this will be um, piecewise quadratic. And then it turns out um, that's not actually a good place to stop, so we do it one more time, and we get a function that depends on five points, and then that's piecewise cubic. Before we can do that, though, we have to now make a distinction that we didn't have to before. So the, the problem that we're given, right, is data in the form of a bunch of points, t i, y i, t 0, the t's go from t 0 to t n. These are our nodes. They are where interpolation happens. But now we're going to have another se sequence of points, S1, S2, up to S sub R, that are called knots. And a knot is where the definition of a piece changes, right? So we'll just say where the, um, oops, oh, well. where the pieces change. Right? Or that defines the breaks between pieces, is what I mean. Okay, so we're going to need those to be different sets of points now. So now we're just going to turn our attention to the knots. We're going to have functions. Each B spline function, we call it capital B, it's a function of x, but it depends on, or it's defined by, a sequence of these knots. So a B spline defined on R knots okay, can be written as a combination of two others. So one of them on the first r minus one of those knots, and then the other is on the last r minus one knots. Okay, so we take uh, two B splines, each one defined on a sequence of R minus one knots, combine them in this way, and you get something that's com that depends on all R of these knots. And because we're multiplying, right, multiplying by a linear function of X each time, you know, when we started with a linear one, we got, got piecewise quadratic, then we take the piecewise quadratic ones and we'll get piecewise cubic. Okay, so this function, this B-spline, right, it will be um, piecewise of degree, let's say it has to be degree uh, 2 less than a number of points, so R minus 2. Also, it's zero 
if x is to the left of the first knot or if x is to the right of the last knot. So remember the hat functions, one of the nice things is that they were all uh, locally uh, contained. That's true of these two, although they're spread out over more of these knots. All right. Now, one thing that we do have to give up, though, once we go past piecewise linear. So you remember that the hat basis had this nice property of cardinality. And that made it, among other things, super easy to write down the um, piecewise linear interpolant using just the data values. But now um, we don't get this property anymore. So now we have to find, if we're going to write down our interpolant in terms of these basis functions, the fees, okay, there are n plus 1 of them, and then we have n plus 1 interpolation conditions. at the nodes. So the t's come back now. So you have that yi is p of t sub i, which is the sum of ck vk of ti. And this is exactly like it looked when we did polynomial interpolation before, or when we did least squares fitting. We've seen this kind of setup a few times, right? This leads to a linear system of equations uh, because we have n plus 1 different values of i. Okay, so in the first column we have all the possible evaluations of phi 1 at the nodes. second column we have phi 2 and so on. The last column we have phi n plus 1. Oh. Sorry about the clutter. So you have that now times c1 C2 up through Cn plus 1, and that gives you the y values. Now, be when we had cardinality conditions before, this matrix here was just an identity matrix. We don't have that now, although, um, as it's going to turn out, because the B splines are only defined on some subset of the interval, um, many of the entries of this matrix will be zero, which could be convenient for solving it in some uh, cases of large numbers. OK, so now we have to talk about how to get those knots. What are the knots? OK, so let's start with the, the nodes, first of all. T0, T1, T2, etc. Okay. Now, this is not enough points to provide all the basis functions we need. So if you take five at a time, right, if I took five, the first five, and then the next five, and then the next five, the last one, right, has to be tn minus four. So there are really only n minus five sequences. Of length five. Consecutive. 
it's important that the knots be consecutive sequences. I'm sorry, I said n minus 5. It's n minus 3. That's better. OK, so we would be four basis functions short. There's another complication um, that I won't get into, but in fact, we don't use t1 or tn minus 1. So what we need to do is to, what we're going to actually include three new knots, and then this one becomes S4. We skip that one. We get S5, S6, and so on. All right. So this would be S sub n, Sn plus 1. Skip that one. Sn, and then we have, oops, I ran out of room here, three more knots um, ending with Sn plus 3. Oh, I misnumbered. This is n plus 3, n plus 4, n plus 5, n plus 6. OK, so now the last um, knot sequence is 6, 5, 4, 3, and oh, what am I doing here? This is Sn plus 2. I'll get this right. This is Sn plus 5 here. OK, now I have n plus 5 knots which is four more than I have nodes, which means I get n plus one basis functions. And those basis functions are cubic B-splines. OK, so I made a hash out of that at the end. But the important thing is that you now have to divorce the nodes from the knots. Okay, so the basis functions are still related to the nodes, but they're not exactly identical. Or they're not a one-to-one -one correspondence anymore. And then the fact that those uh, basis functions are non-zero over a little bit of a wider uh, uh, part of the interval means that you have an interpolation matrix problem to solve. So you have to solve this linear system for the C's, and then that tells you what the interpolant is, how to evaluate the interpolant.